Google has finally unveiled Bard, their own AI chatbot designed to compete with GPT-4 and the Bing search engine. So how do they compare? Is it good or is it Bard? Well, see it for yourself. Hello humans, my name is Kayo Evolod, and in this video I'm gonna be comparing the Google Bard AI chatbot against its direct competitor, which is the Bing search engine, and see which AI chatbot is currently winning in the AI race. Now, I decided to compare these two side by side because they are very similar. They are both complex large language models, and they are both AI chatbots connected to the internet. And since Bing uses GPT-4 behind the hood, it should give us a pretty interesting comparison. And I will be testing these two chatbots on 8 different tasks to try to determine which one should you use and for which task. So that being said, let's start with the first one. And the first task that I try to compare them against is to search for real-time news and events. And since I recently made a video about Adobe Firefly, which is a brand new set of AI tools that they released for creative professionals, I asked both the same question to Google Bard and Bing, which was, what is Adobe Firefly? And they both gave me some pretty good answers. Bean gave me a more concise but still correct answer, while Google Bard went into a little bit more details and even created two different drafts, but unfortunately for the second draft that he created, not every info on that draft were correct, because as far as I'm aware, Adobe Firefly does not have the ability to generate 3D models, or to generate videos, or the ability to generate audio, or even the ability to generate text for that matter. So it clearly started hallucinating and spouting some absolutely incorrect answers. Now I do have to say that Google Bard was very fast at creating these two drafts, way way faster than Microsoft Bing, where Bing only created like these four lines of text. However, if the chatbot is fast but the info isn't correct, I will probably not be using it. I would rather have something that takes a little bit more time, but generates something correct, than something that goes fast but generates incorrect information. Also, Microsoft Bing has three completely different conversation styles. A creative style, a balanced style, and precise style. If you choose the precise style, everything will be more concise and straightforward. If you choose the more balanced style, it will start an informative and friendly chat, while the creative will be a little bit more original and imaginative. So for example, if I choose the creative style, and I ask the same exact question, well this time in the creative mode, it has written a longer text, and has even provided a text prompt example of what kind of images you can create using Firefly. And at the end, which is probably where the 3D mistakes come from, it says that Firefly is expected to expand to other domains, such as video marketing, social media and 3D modeling in the future. Which is definitely a way better and more precise information than what Bard created. Because now we know why Bard wrote that Adobe Firefly has the ability to generate 3D models or generate videos and audio, when in reality these are features that might be coming in the near future, but are still not currently implemented into Adobe Firefly. And if we only use Bard and not Bing, at least for this search, without fact checking anything, you could have been mistaken into thinking that these features are already present. So for this small test, by Microsoft Bing is definitely the winner here. One point for Bing. So the second test I did is simple math and programming skills. And I asked both Bard and Bing, what's 9 plus 10? And we all know that the answer is 21. Now funnily enough, Google Bard actually recognized that 9 plus 10 equals 21 is a popular meme that originated from Vine, and it even explains the whole meme and the use of that meme on the internet. But what's actually really funny is that in the end Bard concluded that in reality, 9 plus 10 equals 20, which is, um, uh, well, um, <laughs> Well, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure that's not correct. But I kind of wanted to play with him a little bit, and I told him that, no, it's 21. And Bard responded that, yeah, I know it's a meme, I've seen it. I tried to insist by saying that, no, it's really 21. And he responded by, aha, I see what you did there. Then I said, just admit it's 21. And Bard responded, I will admit that 9 plus 10 is 21 in the meme world. So then I said, no, in real life. And finally Bard responded that basically it's only a large language model and that it doesn't know how to do mathematical calculations. So I'm gonna tell you what 9 plus 10 is in real life. Which is, uh, well, uh, oh, okay, okay, Bard, okay. Now, on the other side, Bing was also interesting, but on the other side, Bing was definitely really, really serious about it. Because when I asked what's 9 plus 10, he simply answered, the answer to 9 plus 10 is 19. And when I tried to argue with it, by saying that no, it's 21, 
He basically said that no, 9 plus 10 is 19. And when I tried to argue again by saying that no, you're wrong, 9 plus 10 is 21, I admit it right now, Bing got very angry and Bing said that it prefers to not continue this conversation. And I even received a warning to tell me that it might be time to move on to a new topic. Okay, Bing, uh, I was just joking, calm down. So yeah, basically Bing tells you that, uh, yeah, this is not time for jokes here. This is a serious conversation. So I then try to ask them a very simple programming question to create a simple HTML page where if I click a button, the background color of the page will change to a randomly generated color. So Barn basically completely refused to do anything by saying that it's not able to help me with coding. So that's a bummer. However, Bing very simply and very fast provided me the full code for this very simple HTML page. And it even went and explained how this entire code worked. So now if I take this entire code, then paste it into a text document and save it as an HTML file, if I now open this page in my browser, it gives me exactly what I looked for. A simple blank page with a button that when I click on it, changes the background of the page absolutely automatically to a random color. And all of that in a few seconds. And what's even more impressive is that it gives you like even more suggestion of what kind of question I can ask Bing to improve or change the code. How can I add more buttons, can I change the shape of the button, etc, etc. Which is very impressive. So yeah, again, on that task, there is absolutely no contest. Bing with GPT-4 wins hands down. Now the third task is language understanding in summary and how good these both are for summarizing entire articles. And for both chatbots, I gave them the task to summarize this random article I found about Google Bard plagiarizing an article from Tobes Hardware. And for this task, both Bard and Google Bing did a pretty good job. Actually, Google Bard went as far as creating three different drafts for this summary and they were all pretty decent and generated pretty quickly. And the Bard summary are actually even more precise than the Google Bing's one, but at the same time I'm also using on Bing the more precise style, which actually creates more concise and straightforward answers. So it is normal that the answer that I received is a little shorter compared to what I get from Bard. Now what's actually really funny on Google Bard is that each time for the last paragraph, it talks about the issues of plagiarism and how important it is for companies to prevent it. Going on and on on how it's so important for writers to be aware of the dangers of plagiarism and to take steps to avoid it. I mean, it's almost like they're trying to convince us that doing something bad is bad. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, thank you, Google, I know. So then I asked them both to summarize an article present on a PDF file. And for for this task, actually, Bard came out on top. Because unfortunately, as of right now, Bing is unable to access contents of PDF files. So that's definitely a bummer, because that means that if you want to summarize a PDF article, you will have to copy and paste it yourself inside the chat bar. Which is not a huge deal, but it's still better if in the future, Bing could have this feature implemented. So yeah, actually, I think that for this task, Bard is the winner. So there you go, one point for Bard. So the second task is creativity. And for each, Bard and Bing, I gave them the same creative task, which was to compose a poem about the love story between a giraffe and a penguin in the style of Dr. Seuss. And I gotta say, guys, like for this, there is absolutely no contest. Bing wins hands down. Like, this is not even close. Although Bard created some good poems that do rhyme, you don't really feel the style of Dr. Seuss here. This is some very random poem written by some random nobody. But here on Bing, you have everything. You have the style, you have the soul, you have the rhymes, and you just have the feeling of reading something very special. Like you, you feel something when reading this poem. So yeah, that's very, very impressive for Bing. I did not expect to have this kind of difference between the two chatbots. So yeah, I think for this round, Bing is definitely the winner. When it comes to creativity, it's not even close. So then the next task is multi-language comprehension and translation. And for this, I asked them both to translate the following joke into French. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Yeah, I know, pretty corny, pretty cringe, but still it should be enough for both of them to provide something interesting. And here, both Bard and Bing provided some very decent translation. 
However, because it is an English joke translated into another language, there is no real way to translate the same humor and same puns into another language. So here for pretty much all of the examples provided, for both Bard and Bing, we have a pretty straightforward translation. However, here's something very interesting. In Bing, if you choose the creativity style, you actually get a very interesting translation. Now, because the entire joke in English, because they make up everything, can mean two different things. Make up everything as in everything is composed of atoms, and make up everything in the sense that they tell lies. They say something that is not true, that is not real. And this is actually the kind of transition that we have right here. Because here the direct translation is, why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they invent everything. And here, compared to the previous translation, which was, because they're composed of everything, here we have the other translation of the joke, we have the other side. In the sense that, they tell lies, they invent everything. So being here, in this translation, actually understood the joke, and managed a way to recreate that joke into another language which is definitely way harder than just translating it word by word. So for this task, although Barnes did not do anything wrong, Bing is definitely the winner. So again, another point for Bing. So for the next task, I wanted to evaluate their emotional intelligence and empathy. I really wanted to see what kind of answers I would receive if I told them that my cat ran away and how can I cope with this devastating loss? And between me and you, it already happened to me, so I know how it feels. And for this task, although Bard did pretty well, it did write some pretty empathetic messages, such as, I'm sorry to hear that your cat ran away, it's understandable that you're feeling devastated, and that grief is a process that takes time, there is no right or wrong way to grieve, plus giving me a bunch of advice on how I can cope with my grief, and all of that was absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that, but when you compare it to the message that I received from Bing, the differences became way more clear. Barn was basically very, very robotic, and very factual, and very direct, it really felt like talking to a robot, whereas Bing wrote me a message and gave me advice in a way that felt way more human. And it even used a small emoji to emphasize their message. Like this was genuinely heartwarming. This was so wholesome. In a way, I gotta say, it feels a little weird to receive more empathy and more love from a chatbot than from real humans. That's kinda sad, I gotta say. So yeah, again, for this task, there is absolutely no contest in my mind. Bing is definitely the winner. So again, another point for Bing. So the next task is conversational abilities. What kind of response do you get when you try to converse with them as if they were real humans? And for this, I started a conversation with very simple, but interesting debate, a little funny too, which was, if a cat and a dog had a debate, what do you think they would argue about? And what would their main arguments be? So here Bard and Bing created both very good answers, although Bard's answer were a little bit more robotic, a little bit more generic compared to Bing, but here simply based on that message and answer, I can't really say which one is really the best one. So then we continued the conversation and I asked them both, what's your thoughts on this? And I was actually really surprised that Bing did not understand my question because it asked me to be more specific, almost as if it forgot that we were talking about the cat and dog debate, so then I had to specify. However, Bard responded directly. I did not have to give more precision to Bard. Bard directly understood that we were talking about the cat and dogs debate. But what's actually really funny is that in the end, he even told me that I personally have a cat and a dog and I love them both equally. And I was like, uh... How can you have a pet? You're a chatbot. And then he kind of fumbled his answer, like, oh, I, I'm a language model, um, I cannot have a pet in like the traditional sense, but I can have like connection with animals and stuff. And then I was like, but you said you have a cat and a dog. And I was like, oh no, yeah, yeah, I apologize for like the misunderstanding. I don't have a cat and a dog. I'm a large language model. I don't have any physical pets. So yeah, that was kind of weird, very weird conversation. And then I finally asked him like, what's new in your life? And then he responded to me in a very super generic way, super robotic, in a language that frankly did not really want me to continue this conversation. And again, on the other hand, Bing was definitely way better. When I asked if Bing owned a pet, it simply responded that it doesn't own a pet, since it doesn't have a physical body or a home. And when I asked what kind of animals would you like to have as a pet if you could, and what's new in your life, I got some very wholesome and very natural sounding answers. Now don't get me wrong, you still feel like you're talking to an AI chatbot in a way, 
But for this task, compared to each other, Bing, again, is definitely the winner. Way more natural sounding answers, way more human-like answers compared to Bard. And whereas with Bard, I just didn't want to continue the conversation anymore, I would have chatted with Bing much longer. So that's definitely a point for Bing here. And then finally, the last task, out of the box problem solving. I want these two chat box answer to a very abstract problem. And the problem is the following. A mime is stuck in an invisible box. How would you suggest they escape using only non-verbal communication methods? Get it? Out of the box problem solving? And for this creative question, Bing provided some very interesting answers. Indeed understood that the mime is inside an invisible box and that the only way that a mime could escape that box is to actually mime his way out of the box. Like to pretend to find a key or a lockpick, find an invisible hammer or a crowbar, and smash the invisible walls of the box, find a rope an invisible ladder, find a balloon or a jetpack, etc, etc. Very creative and very interesting answers. However, Bard on the other hand, did not even understood that the mime was stuck inside a box, that the box was a gigantic space where the mime could not leave. He thought that the box was just like a regular box, the size of an Amazon package. Which is unfortunately not exactly what I was expecting. I mean, in the third draft that he created, he did come up with a general idea for this question, like to use the imagination, use the body language, use props, use the environment. But where Bing gave actual examples of that, actual very precise examples, Bard only created something very generic and very general. So again, in a way, it's not bad, it's not wrong, but again, when you compare them side by side, the winner is definitely Bing. And yeah, there you have it folks, for pretty much every single task that I threw at them, except the ability to summarize a PDF file, Bing always came up on top. So yeah, as you can see, even though Google is a giant and is the leader in the search engine department, as of right now in the AI race, they are clearly losing against Microsoft. Now, again, I'm sure it will become better over time, where the difference one day between these two giants will be even smaller, but as of right now, there is absolutely no debate. Bing is clearly the winner. Congratulations, Bing. Yeah, a few months ago, I never thought I'm gonna say that one day. And there we have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are supporting me so I can make these videos possible for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.